Well, good evening, and welcome to the study this evening. Um, we're going to begin with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we are so very thankful for the Sabbath that's coming and for our time that we have to gather together on the Sabbath to fellowship, to open your word, uh, to re receive a conviction of our sins and the strength and the power to overcome. We lean upon you, Lord, and we pray that you can work in the lives of each individual searching for truth, seeking your face. We know, Lord, that we are frail and faulty humans. And we seek to unite with you so that we can be united with one another. And we pray for our brethren, for those that um, we have a hard time communicating with. We know, Lord, that uh, the things in ourselves that need to change um, are the only thing we have control of. So we ask that you can work upon our hearts. But also we work, pray, Lord, that you can work upon the hearts of all, that your work can be accomplished in this earth. We need you in this study. We ask that your spirit can guide and direct and help us in this difficult topic to understand it, that it may uh, be something that we can share with others. Give us wisdom and understanding. We pray for those struggling in various ways. We know we live in this world of sin and suffering, and we ask for your angels' care and protection, and that your healing hand can be upon each person. Be with us now and again, we ask in this study, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, good evening. And um, what we're going to do, because uh, Fridays and, and this Sabbath, I'm not going to have a study in, in the afternoon because it's the American group study and Daniel Fontenot has a study in the afternoon. So it's not going to be till next week that I will have an opportunity to have a study in the afternoon. And there we're going to address uh, more the World Economic Forum itself. But in the studies on Friday night, I, I tend to want to look at um, some of the things that we study through the week that relate to uh, 2030 and the chronology of 2030. Now, this week specifically, we started on Judges chapter 9, and there were some things that I saw quite readily that I'm still not sure whether other people can see them or understand it in the way that I understand it. But to me, it was something that spoke to 2030, and we'll see that in a moment. Um, now, we had also uh, completed uh, Judges chapter 8. And in Judges chapter 8, I just want to bring up one little point, dealing with the symbolic use of numbers. And that had to do with um, the golden ephod, which had... Um, which uh, was made in part uh, with these uh, 1,700 shekels of gold. That is, the golden earrings uh, weighed 1,700 shekels of gold. And we had talked about that number, 1,700, trying to find the significance of it. But, I mean, it could be a span of time. There's lots of different ways we tried to look at it. If a, a shekel weighed... 11 grams, then that would be uh, 1,700 times 11. And as we know, 17 times 11 is 187. So 1,700 times 11 is 18,700. And if it was slightly more, it could be 18,720. But uh, there's different measurements when it comes to weights of things. It changes over time. So there is no fixed standard. Um, but the number 1700 uh, had another interesting characteristic. And one of the things that we saw in the symbol in Judges chapter 8 had to do with um, uh, 
the Ishmaelites. So there was a connection between the Midianites and the Ishmaelites, right? So it says that these golden earrings, because they're Ishmaelites, they had golden earrings. Now, of course, we know they're Midianites, but Midianites and Ishmaelites can be used interchangeably, even though they're not directly truly Ishmaelites. Uh, they're often referred to as Ish Ishmaelites, such as when Joseph is sold to the Midianite traders, he sold to the Ishmaelites. And um, we know that this is a symbol of Islam. So if you took 1700, so I'm just going to switch my screen here over to my calculator, so just so you can see this. If I take 1700 and I multiply it by 7, I get this number, 11,900. So what is 11,900? It, it's a couple of things, but... It's um, the 11th day of the ninth month with a couple of zeros, for one thing. Okay, so it could either be September 11th, uh, or it could be 9-11. Right, be, either one. Yeah, so 17 times 7 is 11-9. Right, so we just now have the two zeros. We also know it is the number of days um, in which the Islamic calendar covers a period of 33 years and seven months, while the Gregorian or Julian calendar covers a period of, uh, so, so what did I say? It's 30, 33 years and seven months, while ours covers a period of 32 years and seven months. And, and so that means the Islamic calendar uh, lines up with our calendar again, or with the year, every 32 years and seven months on our calendar. Um, so, for instance, uh, Stephen is born 11,900 days before 9-11, which is quite interesting. And um, if we count from uh, November 9th, 1989, 11,900 days we come to June 9th, 2022. June 9th is a symbol of time setting in this movement. So it's kind of interesting in that sense. Um, but also, we know that when we studied the 11,900 11, days is 391 months. So, so it's another symbol. Uh, and 391 you know, like, like lunar months. And 12 times... 11,900 is um, 391 years. So that period of time that we have for the third woe um, is 11,900 days times 12 uh, with those 15 days extra added. But there, there's more to it than that. But that's just the simple way of looking at it. So I just thought this was interesting that we could connect this 1,700 to of these shekels um yeah so we could connect it to the 71 sons as um now of course i could have done 17 times 70 right so i could have just taken or 1700 times 70 instead of just times seven so i could have got this number which would be um uh, obviously a different number than than the 11,900 and have an extra zero. So that'd be 3,910 years. Um, now 71 times 17 doesn't give us anything particularly interesting. I mean, you could argue that this is the dates, or the numbers in 217, which is a symbol of midnight. Um, but anyway, that's just a little bit of information that I thought I wanted to share connecting to this. So one of the things, this is the story of Gideon, and we know that the story of story of Gideon is about July 18th. Um, it's about that message. And Abimelech is one of the sons of Gideon, here called Jerubbaal, that is, that's the other name uh, for Gideon. Um, now we know that Gideon has 70 sons, but he also has this other son, which is the son of a concubine that lives in Shechem. 
So he's not counted among the 70. But he's going to ask these men of Shechem to make him a king, that if they kill the 70 sons of Gideon, then they would have him as king. So that, that's the plan. So it's called three score and ten persons. That's uh, verse two. And he's going to offer, he gets from um, the house of Baal, Bareth, that's the covenant of Baal. He's going to hire these um, empty and frothy persons uh, with three score and ten pieces of silver. So we're going to have 70 sons of Gideon, and there's going to be 70 pieces of silver that are given um, as a bounty. So it doesn't say how many persons he hired, but he's going to hire persons who are empty or vain and light, that is frothy. And these are going to be hired with these 70 pieces of silver as a bounty, and they're going to end up killing the 70 sons of Gideon, except one is going to escape, and that's going to be the youngest, and that's going to be uh, Jotham, or Jotham, right? So that's verse 9. So I know I'm not going through this in, in great detail. Um, I'm not reading all of the verses, and there's lots in the spirit of prophecy. Um, if we look at uh, August 4th, 18... It was 1881, article in the Signs of the Times. Ellen White gives us the most information that she writes about this uh, Abimelech is in that article in the Signs of the Times. So uh, people can look at that, and they can look at the study as well that we did on Thursday, which was August 4th, 141 years later. Um, so now Jotham, he's going to escape. Right, so it says in verse 5 that they're going to kill these 70 uh, sons upon one stone, notwithstanding yet Jotham, the youngest son of Jeroboam, uh, was left, for he hid himself. And all the men of Shechem gathered together in all the house of Milo and went and made Abimelech king on the plain of the pillar that was in Shechem. And we did a study about that. We're not going to look at that right now regarding this pillar. Uh, but this is going to be in the area where they have the blessings and the curses. And when they told it to Jotham, he went and stood at the top of Mount Gerizim, which is the Mount of the Blessing, and lifted up his voice and cried and said unto them, Hearken unto me, ye men of Shechem, that God may hearken unto you. And he's going to give this parable, and Ellen White talks about this. Now, this parable talks about uh, these trees. There's three different types of trees. The olive tree, the fig tree, and and the vine, which is technically not a tree, but um, which produces wine. So we have uh, all of these uh, different symbols. We have the wine that cheereth God and man. We have the fruit of the fig tree with its sweetness. And we have <clears throat> the olive, which, of course, produces olive oil. And... And these all are symbols. They're symbols of the three angels' messages uh, and their work upon humanity. But the fourth is going to be this bramble, and bram the bramble is going to re represent Abimelech. And he wants them to put their trust in his shadow. And of course, a bramble doesn't really produce much shadow. Um, and its fruit really is thorns, doesn't really produce any fruit. Now, the thing that jumped out to me was uh, the 70. So when I saw this 70, right away I thought of the 70 weeks. And why would I think of the 70 weeks? And I'm not sharing my screen, so... Then it would be because of Daniel 9, the 69 week, and then the 70th week. Right. So we have 69 weeks and the 70th week. And so as soon as I saw that there's 70 sons of Gideon, 
and 69 are killed, but one is left, then the message, because this is, these are not representing people, they're representing messages, is to me illustrated that the message of Jotham is the message of the 70th week. So to me, that just jumped out. Whether everyone understands the logic or not, to me, that just seemed this 70 being divided into 69 and 1. Yet it's always going to be talked about that he kills 70 persons on one stone. It's not going to say 69. That is, we can see that this is all part of the 70 weeks. The 70 weeks, even though they have this one week, the 70th week, it's still part of the 70. So it's 69, these are slain, the 70th is the one that's going to be giving this message. Now, in this movement, uh, when was the message of the 70th week given to this movement? Wasn't it in 2019? Okay, it was in 2018. Okay, so you're close. And, th and this was in the summer of 2018. Um, it was, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think it was from August 6th. I did a series in, in Alberta. Uh, Jeff was there. It was from August 6th um, to 11th. So it's August 6th to 11th that I did this presentation, these presentations on the week of Christ. At least that, that's the, the period of time the camp meeting lasted. Um, and it was at that camp meeting that uh, Jeff first introduced the idea that we might be able to set time. He talked about Stephen's study um, dealing with um, uh, connecting from the time that Christ did his ministry in the holy place of the sanctuary and when he ended it, being this period of 1844 years. But in Stephen's study, he had actually pointed to November 9th, uh, 2019, but Jeff never picked up on that. So Stephen had a study that pointed to November 9th, 2019, uh, in the summer of 2018, prior to Tess uh, presenting her study on November 9th, 2019. But it just wasn't picked up by Jeff. And there's a whole history about what was happening here. Now, in this week of Christ's study, um, so just hang on a second here. And I'm just doing something here on my computer. I just want to see something. I should have done this earlier, but if we count from the August 11th date, 2018, it brings us to October 22nd, 2022. If we count 1,533 days, so it was just something I wanted to look at. Um, but I'm not sure, you know, where we would place all of this. Uh, this study on the week of Christ. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go over to something else here. Uh, I guess the first thing I will do. Yes, I know the six uh, August sixth and August eleventh are relevant to uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but I wasn't gonna go into that. Um, so there's lots of information. So one of the things in getting ready for the study was just there's so much information there's so much that we have found and so many things that are tied together that it was really hard to know where to start um so let me see i find this here
Um, so this would be what I want. Okay, so this, I'm not going to go in detail over this study, uh, but I do need to review it. <clears throat> so we have this week of Christ, and this probably isn't the best diagram for this, uh, probably. Well, we have the week of Christ, 25, 20 days is how we normally take it. But of course, that would just be symbolic. We can see that this is symbolic of the counterfeit week of Christ. This is the Satanic Covenant week, 723, 538, 1798. Something we're all familiar with, the 2520 for Northern Israel. And it's counterfeiting Christ's week. And then what I had done is I had taken the literal week of Christ, that is, I'm going to use the cross and count 1260 days on either side of it. Um, and when I did that, I recognized that 538 represents the cross. And so um, the thing that was interesting is if I counted this direction, it would be 46 days from September 30th, 30th, 27 AD, which is the 10th day of the seventh month, which would begin the 70th week to the cross. So it's 46 days longer than 1260 days. So I recognized I could put the, the years underneath going in reverse to the days on the top going left to right. The years go from right to left as Hebrew is written. And then we also had uh, the fact that 70 AD would line up with the 10th day of the fifth month in 32 AD and the 10th day of the fifth month in 70 AD is when the temple is destroyed. And so when we look at Revelation chapter 9 and it talks about the midst of the week, it's also going to talk about the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, specifically the temple. So without going into detail about this, this was a very profound study showing that the literal week of Christ um, was confirmed by this date of the 10th day of the fifth month, that something that's very unlikely that this would work. Um, and it's the only date that I would have to find in order to confirm it, because that's what Daniel 9, verse 24 to 27 is addressing, the midst of the week and the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. But also this is the prophetic mirror. So when we look at this, we can see uh, we have the prophetic mirror here, bunch of messy stuff there, but we're all familiar with the prophetic mirror and that this is being illustrated in this week of Christ study. So we can also see that if we count the actual period of time from the 10th day of the seventh month in 27 AD to the 10th day of the seventh month in 34 AD when Stephen is stoned, it's a cardinal count of two, five, six, nine days. It's an ordinal count of two, five, 70 days. So it's, it's 25, 20 plus 49 days or 25, 20 plus seven weeks. So we had also learned that we could uh, see these years on the bottom and that we could extend these. Now this, this is kind of cut off from here. So I need to move this over. This needs to go all the way over to here. Sorry about that. And so I had made a prediction back in 2018 based upon this, that when we were going to look at the year 2019 that was coming up, that this would represent Judas's betrayal. And these dates that you can see here on the top, um, these are the dates in 27 AD. So I know there's for somebody watching this who's not familiar with this, it may look a little bit odd. But what we have is Judas's betrayal, and that was uh, the 12th day of the first month when Judas is going to uh, go to the priests on that day that not much happens um, except Judas's betrayal. And then we could see that we would have these symbols moving further. So, for instance, the 11th day of the first month 
is a symbol of 2020. And that's going to be the end of that prophetic mirror uh, dealing with uh, the line of the Levites that Jeff had noted. So it's going to be that where that 65, uh, 100 and, 126 days ends. That's divided into two periods of 63 days. So I'm not going to go into that. Um, this one should go over here. So now the thing that became interesting is I had noticed that if I kept counting this, I would come to the first day of the first month, um, which would be uh, April 5th, 2030. This is the this is the date in 27 AD, March 28th, first day of the first month. But in 2030, the first day of the first month is April 5th. Here I wrote it as fourth month, fifth day. Um, so this was the first place where I recognized the first day of the first month was connected to 2030, but I didn't think anything of it. That is, that's too far into the future, especially from the perspective of 2018 and, and what we were looking at that was going to be coming. And so, but I recognized something about 2030 that I had, I had known for quite a few years uh, before that. And that is that 2030 happens to be, um, that is, if we go from the first day of the first month, so I have to find this here. So I know this is a bit of a review, but I want to get to this uh, part. So anyway, we can see the week of Pro Christ produces this uh, April 5th, 2030 date, which is the first day of the first month. And... And if we're going to look at this in the message of Jotham from Mount Gerizim, from the Mount of Blessing, this prophecy that he has, wouldn't this prophecy have to be about 2030? Or is it about something else? That is, the week of Christ's study has lots of things in it. But the one thing that I have been presenting on Friday evenings is the 2030 symbol, symbolic date. that We have no event to mark. We just have a symbolic date, 2030. So, you know, and I've asked this question in the morning study, you know, does do people see what I see, that the message of Jotham is the message that's being presented now regarding 2030? That would be a very interesting tie-in. Right. But is it obvious? I mean, to me, it was so obvious. As soon as I saw it, I recognized it. But, you know, I could be suffering from uh, confirmation bias or something, you know, or just, you know, some kind of persistent thinking. But would it be obvious to people that we should do this, that we should take Jotham as being the 70th week, and that his message has to be the message of 2030. You know, we're missing lots of context for people who haven't been following the morning studies, but it's pretty clear that the, the messages in Judges can be applied to the present situation in this movement and our responsibility. And, and that responsibility that's been shown us is that we need to come into unity and that that unity comes from our connection with Christ, not from criticizing our brethren, not from seeing ourselves as better than others. Because the upper room experience doesn't come because one group um, is right and the other group is wrong. If we look at the message that was given by um, Toby, uh, just prior to the December 6th declaration, I think it was the week prior, it was pretty clear that all of us need to look at ourselves and that the infighting that was existing then needed to stop. And it still hasn't stopped. So so the message that's that's coming from the understanding of this, the study of judges, is a message <coughs> that is 
is meant to bring about the upper room experience. At least that's the way that I understand it. Any thoughts on that? I think that's fairly direct. Okay. Now, I mean, there's so many things regarding 2030, um, but the one that I really want to look at in particular has to do with Collins studies, which we did spend quite a bit of time on. And I need to find them, so that's not there. I have lots of, lots of charts here. No, that's not it. No, just let me. I have way many, too, too, too many diagrams. And so I'm going to skip through here until I find it. I'll just hang on a second here. That's interesting. So remember that we were just talking about those 1,700 days? Well, 1,700 years brings us from March 7th, 321 AD to March 7th, 2021. Um, this is just a study dealing with uh, the Sunday law, by the way. So a new 1700 I'd seen somewhere else. But anyway, that's not what we're looking at right now. So we have lots of different charts here. It's going to come up right away. Okay. This is it. Okay. Now, what we see here is something interesting. So Colin's study, which I'm going to bring up some of his study. So we know Trump wins the election on November 9th, 2016. And Biden is going to be inaugurated on January 20th, 2021. That happens to be 1,533 days, which is 219 weeks. Now, what's the significance of 219 weeks? What's the significance of 219, other than being 1,533 days, which is a wonderful manifestation of the power of God. It's the number of days from August 11th, 1840 to October 22nd, 1844. But what is 219? Okay. If we go from Trump's election to Biden's inauguration, it's 219 weeks. What week begins? It's the completion of 219 weeks, but it's the start of how many weeks? Of which week? Would it be the start of the 20th week? Uh, 220th week, pardon me. Yes, that'd be correct. Right. So 220 is a symbol. 219, as far as I know, isn't. It's 220 minus 1. But it would mark a border between, you know, or at least ordinarily, the beginning of the 220th week. Correct? Agreed. Okay. Now we also have, when we go from Trump's election to the midterm election in November 8th, 2022, so that's the one coming up in a few months, um, that's going to be 2,190 days or 219 French Republican weeks. Uh, so the French Republican calendar has 10 day weeks, so it's just divided by 10. Um, but it's interesting that we see this in this period of time. And we also notice that in the General Conference session on June 6, 2022, so this is another study dealing with Ted Wilson. So this is Colin's study sort of uh, dealing with Trump and dealing with Ted Wilson. Um, we can see that it's going to be 219 days to the end of the structure that Colin's study implies. That is, Colin doesn't put the dates here. He doesn't put uh, January 11th, 2023. He doesn't count the 65 days like he does at the beginning. He just uses the symbol of the 46th uh, president of the United States being Biden and the 19 uh, 
Republican president being Trump. So he has this um, as symbolic. He doesn't add the time here, but I put the time here because the time is witnessed to by all these different structures um, from, from, from the symbols of July 18, 2020 are symbolized here in this structure, which is one of the reasons I accept this structure is that it's it's valid in so many different ways. Um, so many witnesses that we would have to accept it. What we wouldn't accept is how it's being interpreted. The idea that Trump is going to be reelected would ignore the things that we were taught um, in understanding the lines. So we would know that Trump uh, already has fulfilled his role in the line in which we were recognizing him. And that this is something different. This is, this is part of a different line, so to speak. Now, the 219 days then from Ted Wilson to being reelected to the end of this structure, January 11th, 2023, we would have to take this as significant again because it's already been witnessed to twice and this is the third time it's witnessed to. So 219 days, again, in an ordinal count, it would be 220 days. So this marks the beginning of the 220 and 220 is a sign of restoration. So, so what that means, particularly as events in the future, we don't know. We do know that these dates symbolically represent something. And some of these events, such as the midterm election, is something that's already determined. Right? It's not something that we're predicting. We're not predicting that there's going to be a midterm election on November 8th, 2022. We know that there is going to be one. Now, why am I bringing up, because maybe I skipped a step here, but why am I bringing up Colin's study when we're studying about um, Jotham's prophecy and about Abimelech becoming king? What is it that we've, we've concluded or drawn from that study? Because one thing that we're not looking at is none of these people in Judges represent persons at the present time. They represent messages. And just because somebody is attached to a message doesn't make that person good or bad. Right? We know that there is truth in what Colin has presented, just as there is truth in what Odilio did in his presentations. But that we didn't agree with the conclusions or some of the conclusions that were drawn from those studies. We could agree with the structures and with the dates, and we could see they're significant. But we would see that they're missing out on the significance of those dates because we're not studying together. If we were studying together, we would see the same things. Right? Because we, we would be coming to an understanding together. We would be seeking to understand the truth as a group, which we should always be doing. Because this is God's movement. But we know in the story of Judges chapter 9 that we see a, um, a disunity that exists within the message. That is in Judges, so we're going to go back there. So we know Gideon had done his work and the message of Gideon is the message of July 18, 2020. But Abimelech now, who is a son of Gideon, but through a concubine that lives in Shechem. He's not counted among the 70, and he's going to uh, cause this rebellion against this other message. This is the message of July 18th. And the fact that it's represented by 70 sons of Gideon shows that it's tied to the message of um, July 18th. And why would I say that the 70 weeks is tied to July 18th? 
When I first looked at the 70 weeks in connection with this movement, I used two different uh, individuals in Genesis with the same name, Lamech. Right? There's two Lamechs, two classes. And the name Lamech, if we add up, not add up, but multiply the gematria for each of the letters in Lamech, we get 18720. We get the symbol of July 18th. And there's lots of other things that came from the study of, of the 70 weeks and the two Lamechs, the 777 years and the 7 times 70 curse. Right. So there's a whole big study dealing with that. Um, so we can see that the 70 persons and the 70 shekels can represent, or the 70 pieces of silver, can represent um, the 70 weeks, and especially when we have this one son that isn't killed, Jotham, right? Now, we would then say that this message of Abimelech being king in our study in the spirit of prophecy, um, we found that in this article, August, so I'm going to bring this up again. And, and I, I ask that people take time to study these um, morning studies to get more information on it. But this, this um, so on August 4th this year, we came across this article in the Signs of the Times, which is just the most that Ellen White writes about it. In, in a sense, Abimelech is only men mentioned somewhat incidentally in her other, other books or other writings. But in Signs of the Times, on August 4th, the date that we were studying this, we came across this article because it's obviously going to show us um, uh, when we searched it, right? So we just found it was very interesting. Now, the part that really uh, jumped out at us is this part that tar talks about pride and ambition, similar to that which cursed ancient Israel exists in the Church of God today. And we know that Ellen White is writing to us. And we can see that this is a rebuke of us, of this movement, and, and that this is counsel for us right now, that we need. This is basically the counsel which has been given to us in our study of the lines, of understanding the lines when we started this study. We, see, we come again and again to this same message, asking us to see in ourselves our sins and to be cleansed from those sins. And, and she really lays out what those sins are, pride and ambition, the, the misrepresentation of our brethren, gossip, all these types of things. So you can see when you read this, we're not going to read it now, um, that Ellen White is really illustrating the condition of this movement, and it's a message to this movement at this time. So my view... This is and, and this would have to be something that you would have to study and find your own conviction on. But my view is that this message of Jotham's prophecy is the message that's being understood and studied right now in connection with 2030. That is, it's the week of Christ's study that points to April 5th, 2030, specifically. And that this is connected to, or an answer to, a message that is symbolized by uh, Abimelech. Now, in doing so, I'm not condemning the people who are, like Colin and Odilio, who are presenting things that are true but have a false interpretation. Because as individuals, they're not being addressed. It's just that there is this message that has arisen. Now, when we looked at Judges, we could see that the enemies that were left to prove us or to test us um, symbolized messages in this movement. So these kings that were left, these nations that were left, um, symbolized messages that have occurred in this movement. But they're false messages, and the Judges that rise up are messages that are, arose to answer to these false messages. Now, in this case, 
with Abimelech. It's not an outside enemy that was left in the land of Israel that they have to address. We, we don't, in a sense, you know, we're not really looking at uh, Jotham as a judge, even in this case. He's just, this is something that's happening within the movement after July 18th, that there are these, these messages that are leading of the movement astray. And the message of Jotham is meant to bring this movement back together, to counteract this message that, that is symbolized by Abimelech becoming king. So this is not an attack on any person. And, and my view is that Daniel Fontenot and Odilio and uh, Colin um, have light for this movement. But we also haven't been converted. We haven't entered into covenant. We're still the disciples prior to the upper room. We've had a disappointment and we have to come together. And the message of Jotham is that message. And it's just going to take some time. And how it's going to happen, I don't know. But I believe from everything that I've studied that we still have to come to this upper room experience. That in order for this movement to accomplish its task, um, we can't be in this situation that we're in. We're not going to be able to accomplish this task in the situation that we're in presently. So, you know, we're going to be, continue studying this, uh, especially this part about uh, the three years and how this relates um, in the morning studies. But I'm going to kind of look ahead a bit at that and what I think that means. So, so I suggest people read this article and, and also the article that follows, which is August 11th, 1881, which sort of continues a bit um, dealing with the backsliding period, it's called. So, so these two, th these two um, are related, this August 4th article and this August 11th article in the Signs of the Times. And, of course, August 11th would be, um, so this deals with after the death of Abimelech. So I think it's going to be talking about um, something else, but I'm, I'm not going to go into that. But I think people should read both of these articles and think about them. <clears throat> now, I want to go over to Colin's study here. So this is uh, the PowerPoint, his notes. Now, you can see there's some uh, similarities to the chart that I have. He has the election of Trump. He has November 8th instead of November 9th, and he could have easily just used November 9th and done an ordinal count. Um, but it's 1,335 days from November 8th, 2016. Hopefully people can see this, uh, to July 4th, 2020. And we know July 4th, 2020 is significant because it's the end of the 100 days of prayer. And it's 13 days from the end of July 4th, 2020 to July 18th, the beginning of July 18th, 2020, which 13 days is um, uh, 18,700 notes. What is it? How many uh, minutes is it? Is it minutes? 18,720 minutes, is that correct? Yes, okay. And the 100 days is 144,000 minutes. So we have that uh, symbol there. 10 days is 14,400 minutes because there's 1,440 minutes in a day. So anyway, we can see that he has this part of this structure here. And the 1335 is interesting in that connection. Okay. Um, we also see he has this other symbol of 105 weeks. That's the symbol of the 10th day of the fifth month. And he's going to count that from November 3rd, 2020, when we have an election, to the midterm election. And so the fact that it's 105 weeks, we would see as significant. 
there's some other details in here which I'm, I'm not going to go into um, but you can see the 65 days there that he has from November 3rd to January 6th that's part of that structure which I showed uh, but he doesn't show the 65 days over at the other side from uh, the midterm election to um, January 11th 2023 Now, in this, I mean, I don't see too much problem with it. I mean, the 318 is also another important symbol, which I'm not going to go into, uh, and these 45 weeks. But notice he puts December 25th, 2021. And that's the end of our line as the center of this uh, period, and he's counting these 100 days. So there's some things here I, I don't know if I would particularly do. We don't have... Anything marking February 10th, 2021. We don't have a symbol there that I know of. But we can say generally here that this structure is sound. And, and he's going to go into some more. He's just going to give some background regarding uh, ancient Israel. So we're familiar with this. And, and again, he's going to tie in this history this parallel of this period of time. So I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to go through this in detail. Um, he's going to have the 1533 here. So the January 20th, 2021, with the November 9th, 2016. So he has the 1335 from November 8th, and he has the 1533 from November 9th. And so there's a bunch of different things that he has here uh, regarding how he sees this tied to uh, the COVID mandates and so forth. So that that's call and study very cursorily uh, done. Now we'll go back to this. So one of the things that we find when we and I have to find the right diagram. Okay, so there's a bunch of things here. This is not the one I want. Okay, I'm just going to make this. Just so you can see it better. Sorry about that. So I can make this bigger. Okay, so what we see here is lots of different things. Um, and we're going to have this April 5th, 2030 date. And this January 11th date. I thought I had a better diagram of this here. I'm just going to see if I have a better one. I don't know where I would have put it. Yeah, so this is, I guess, the best one I have. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I have another one somewhere. But anyway, um, April 5th, 2030 is... Um, from January 11th, 2023, is 88 prophetic months, which is 2,640 days. So I know people need to see that. Let's go like that. So this is the end of call and study. This is this April 5th, 2030 date. Um, we also have, if we go to December 25th, 2021, it's 12 times 252 days, so 3,324 30, days. Um, if we go from June 20, 22, 2012, it's 220 months. I'm not going to go into the detail of some of these things. Here is our uh, December 21st, 2021, 2012 date. This is something to do with my history. This has to be here somewhere. No. Ah, 
here's the one I want. Okay, so this is similar to what I had. It just has uh, less stuff involved. So there's that 2,640 days or 88 months. And uh, we also have here's call and structure again. And we can see these symbols leading us to January 11th also tie us to April 5th, 2030. And we also did a study dealing with um, Ezra. So this study is a bit more complex, but dealing with Ezra, there was the from the first day of the first month to the first day of the first month. That is in 457 BC, the first day given to us is the first day of the fifth, first day of the first month when he leaves Babylon. And if we line that up with September 11th, it's going to um, connect us to the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030. If we count it, um, so I don't know how to go into this study. I know I did a study on this. It's fairly involved, but the thing that we can see is that um, the story of Ezra is going to give us the story from September 11th, 2001, to 2030, to the 10th day of the seventh month. We could also do a simpler study, that is, if we just take, um, because in one of them, and I'm trying to remember, one of them I'm using 30-day months, and the other one I'm using 29.530587-day months. Um, so these are months of 30 days that are being counted up here. And if I take the first day of the first month, it would be August 22nd, 2001, instead of September 11th, because this is using uh, different months. And this period of time would mark our history from September 11th, the month in which September 11th occurs, to April 5th, 2030, being the first day of the first month. So. This first day of the first month symbol uh, is something that brings us around to a, a completion of something that began in Millerite history. So um, how am I going to do this? So if we look at Millerite history, so I talked about this a little bit um, earlier. One of the other witnesses for April 5th, 2030 had to do with um, we had a couple of different uh, points. Let's see if I can find this. I wish these are all nicely organized, but they're not. Okay, I'll do it this way. Okay, so this is the one that I wanted, um, I think. This one would work as well. Okay. When we look at Millerite history, and we go to the first day of the first month in 1844, that's going to be April 19th, and we would count how many days to October 22nd? Okay, so Iran says 187 days, and that would be an ordinal count. That is, the 10th day of the seventh month is the 187th day of the year. All right, so that is if I start at the beginning of the first day of the first month, and I go to the end of the 10th day of the seventh month, I will have completed 187 days. If I do a cardinal count, it would be 186 days. But we know the symbol of 187 is the symbol of July 18th. Now, if I count 2,300 months, that is lunar months, it is 67,920 days. So that it's, but it's also 186 years. So if I was going to count, from April 1st, 1844, 186 years instead of 186 days, I would come 
to April 5th, 2030, to the day, right? So from the end of April 19th, I'm going to count 186 years. It brings me to the beginning of April 5th, 2030. And that's 2300 lunar months, which is 186 years. So it's extremely precise. But we also know that 67,920 days is 187 prophetic years plus 20 prophetic months. That is 187 prophetic years, the chapters in Genesis in which Abraham's covenant, chapter 12, 15, 17, and 22, if multiplied together, give us 67,320, not 920. The difference there is 600 days, and 600 days is 20 prophetic months. So the distance between April 1844 and April 5th, 2030, is 187 prophetic years and 20 days, or 20 months, pardon me, um, 187 prophetic years and 20 months, or it's 186 cardinal years, we could say um, 187 ordinal years, and it's also 2300 months. So we have all the, so instead of coming to the end of the 2300 days, we're now going to count it's 186 years, which is 2,300 months. It, it, to me, it's just an amazing, impossible to be a coincidence structure. And we're given this date first from the week of Christ study, right? So we're given this information, and it's giving us as a witness to what's happening in the movement presently. Now, So we have this date, this is this week of Christ study going backwards. You got the first day of the first month, April 5th, 2030, and we have all of these symbolisms. Now, above here, just to sort of complete this, is if we were to take um, periods of 187 years, which are lunar years, we would have 11 times 187 to 34 AD and 11 times 187. So this is gonna go from Abraham leaving Haran. We don't know when he left Haran exactly, but I'm gonna go from the first day of the seventh month in, 18, in 1963 BC. And that's gonna be a period of um, 22,044 months. And that's 400 and uh, yeah, so, and then for, for um, this whole period of time is 41,014 lunar years. So it's, again, it's represented as a mirror, the number of, of lunar years. It's 187 times 264. So we have the symbol of July 18th, which of course, the other symbol is the 26th day of the fourth month, 264. That produces 49,368 months. So, I, uh, so these types of studies have lots of details, lots of information. The point that I want to, to make is that we can connect um, 1963 BC to 2030 with this structure. Now, the way that I came to that was we had these 7 times 252 from 34 AD going back to um, 731. That's when Jacob is going to bless his 12 sons. And then we have from 34 AD, 17, 7 times 252, or 1764 years, to 1798. So these are structures dealing with 252. That's 14 times 252. And Stephen had noted there was 232 years from when Abraham leaves to Iran to when Jacob blesses his sons, his 12 sons. And there's 232 years from 1798 to 2030. So this would just be a completion of this mirror, which Stephen and I had first noticed in 2016. So that's that's just this extended. So this is just this mirror extended and then analyzed here in, in the symbols that we have. So the question that, that we would have to ask 
can we connect this to the message of Jotham? And can we say that the message of Jotham is addressing or um, bringing a message that is to reconcile this movement? That's the purpose of the message. It's going to be a message about the week of Christ. What would be the significance that it's the week of Christ study that is the message that's supposed to unite this movement? Why would that be significant? Because what is the week of Christ about? The gospel. Okay, the gospel. Confirming the covenant, Iran says. You know, confirming the covenant with many for one week. Now, we know on the 1843 and the 1850 charts, uh, we have the cross. You know, and sometimes, you know, people will look at the 1843 chart and they see all the numbers and the beasts and they say, you know, where's the gospel? Well, Christ is the very center of that chart. Christ on the cross is the center of that chart. The 70th week, Christ is the center of that week. It is the gospel, but it is something that is supposed to bring about our conversion. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Behold what manner of love that the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. When we look at the cross, when we look at this message, this is a message about the cross. It's about the gospel. It's about the work that he wants to accomplish in us. It's about the crucifixion of self. It's about a transformation of character. If this message to us is only about information, knowledge, that doesn't actually affect us or convert us, then we are in a worse condition that to somebody who has never heard the gospel. You know, I was uh, talking with Heidi about this this week. Because um, one of the things I thought about when I was backpacking was about the gospel. And, and, and the gospel sort of in its simplicity. You know, the question is, how can someone who knows so much, who knows, who reads the spirit of prophecy, who knows, who has almost a complete understanding of truth, not that we understand everything, but understands the message of Adventism, who keeps the Sabbath, who obeys the health laws, who pays tithe and mint and cumin, who fasts twice in the week, or cumin, I guess it is, why would that person not be saved when there are people who are totally ignorant of the gospel? Why is it that some people are going to be lost for rejecting one little truth? At least apparently that's why it is, that there's some division that happens and they just go off in a little way from the truth and they're going to be lost. While somebody who has very little knowledge of the truth but responds to it, the truth that they do have is going to be saved. How is that? Because there's going to be many people saved who didn't know about July 18th. And yet there are people who profess July 18th but are going to be lost. Why is that? Anyone have a good way of explaining this? What does it mean when we have greater light? That we have had more opportunity because of the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the spirit of prophecy to understand that which God would have us to know. Okay. And so God is going, you know, the light shines in the darkness. Right? So when God gives us light, it's because we're in darkness, correct? 
Agreed. Yes. And, and not everyone's given the same light. That is, some people can respond to God with very little light. So somebody who needs a lot of light, what is that saying about them? Are they better than somebody who has less light but responds to it? No. No. Yeah. But we often think because we have light, because we're rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, that we are saved, that we have the golden ticket into heaven. We're Seventh-day Adventists. No, we're not just Seventh-day Adventists. We're reformers. We're, we're of the priests. Right? We're of this special group. But we recognize, we don't recognize, that we're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. The light that has come to us has not affected the work that it needs to. Now, it is partly true that we get light as we walk in the light. So, you know, that's not partly true. It is true. God gives us light as we obey him. But some of us have just received light from others. Not because we haven't obeyed God. It's, it, it, it's not because we obeyed God that we have light. It's just we happen to be around people that have light. But all of us, we would have to recognize are in darkness. And that God gives us light because he wants to save us. And maybe some of us need more light in order to be saved. Because we're stubborn. We should never think just because we have light that we are saved. We're not saved by knowing things. We're saved by how we respond to the light we have. So when we look at this message of Jotham, if this is the message regarding 2030, it's a message meant to bring unity. Now, of course, not all are going to respond. The message of Abimelech is going to bear sway for three years. That's the way that I take this. When Abimelech had reigned three years over Israel, then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. And the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech. That the cruelty done to the three score and ten sons of Jerubbabel might come, and their blood be laid upon Abimelech, their brother, which slew them, and upon the men of Shechem, which aided him in the killing of his brethren. So remember that these don't represent people. These represent messages. And the men of Shechem represent, uh, in a sense, people, but those that are responding to this message of Abimelech. But he reigns over Israel for three years. What are these three years? Can we take this as a symbol of time in our movement. I think that's possible. Okay. Now we know three, of course, can be symbolic. Um, three days, three years. These, these are used throughout scripture. But if we were going to count three years, where would we count it from? What would be a logical place to, to start the three years? Some could think 2018, 2021. Okay. Um, okay, but we're going to have first the message of Gideon, which is the message of July 18th. So wouldn't it have to be after July 18th that we would start the count? Maybe even July 18th. That's a possibility. Okay. Now, of course, these wouldn't necessarily be three whole years, because three days doesn't mean 
72 hours. Um, but we could look from 2020 to 2023 or to 2022 even. Could we not? If we're going to do an inclusive count. So however we look at it, it would represent this period of time in which uh, this movement is under a message which is symbolized by the rule of Abimelech. And can we say that this movement is under such a message? Uh, yes, I think so, as long as there's such discord. And also, I was thinking that three could stand for a great change, too, like we're transiting from, well, I'm thinking of the three-step testing process, right? When yeah, you realize represent. our sin. Yeah, and then we graduate to sanctification. Right, so it can represent the three-step testing prophetic message, the three angels' messages. The, one of the assumptions or one of the, the premises that we're studying in Judges chapter 9 is the message of Abimelech, a false three angels message. And the fact that it's represented by three years uh, could uh, symbolize that. Now, we specifically addressed, you know, two different points that Jeff has always fought against in, in this movement. And that is the false medical missionary work which incorporates new age ideas and doesn't follow completely the counsel of the spirit of prophecy. And, and we also have a false message of righteousness by faith that Jeff constantly fought against in this movement. And we've seen both of those presently in this movement. So, so come on, the guy Godhead too is some, What's well, a godhead? But that's not that's that's on the periphery of this movement. <clears throat> yeah. But but I'm saying the two things that Jeff had fought against that exist presently in this movement are this call to the medical missionary work, which I don't believe is a correct call. That is, it's not the medical missionary work I see in the spirit of prophecy. And also the message of righteousness by faith, which is being presented by some that I don't see as a correct message. It's the message that Jeff was always fighting against. Uh, particularly the things that Jeff was fighting against were presented in Oklahoma in 2010. Because Jeff didn't organize that camp meeting in 2010 in Oklahoma. The guy who organized it had his wife presenting. Um, uh, a message in the morning meeting um, and the message she was presenting is the same message that's being presented to this movement presently regarding righteousness by faith. Now Iran has some notes just about the 69 and the 70 you can look in that but one of the things is uh, he notes is that uh, 70 prophetic weeks is 69 um, lunar weeks or, or 69 solar years pardon me 70 white weeks so um so that's how he's just dealing with the 69 and 70. but um so it is a further connection to the week of christ and we've looked at that when we looked at the week of christ study but anyway going back to this point we can see that there is this period of three years in which this movement is under the the rule of this message but there's going to uh that that message is going to be defeated. That's my understanding of it. That's how I look at this. And one of the things that I've had to learn um, in my whole life, but in this movement, is that we need patience. We need to trust that God is going to take care of this message and this movement, that our responsibility lies with ourselves individually to obey God to be truly converted. And that's not an easy process, especially when you're as messed up as we are. 
you know, God loves us and he saves us. I mean, when God came to me when I was 17 and on August 11th, 1980, and I was converted, I was converted. But I wasn't, the work had just begun. The work of sanctification had just begun in me. I gave my life to him. He began to work in my life. But he didn't show me everything that needed to be changed all at once. He showed me that light shines in the darkness and that I was hiding in the darkness. But I had no clue of what God wanted to do with me. And if, I, if he could have shown me what I really was, I would have just died. I would not have been able to withstand the light that he wanted to give me. I wouldn't have accepted it. And all of us are in that boat. God has given us light, and he wants us to respond to it. And he's given us the three angels' messages. But there is a counterfeit message, and the counterfeit comes before the genuine. We are going to be medical missionaries. And we are going to be truly converted, living examples of righteousness by faith. Not whited sepulchers, not vessels that are white on the outside, clean on the outside, but full of dead men's bones on the inside. We need to be really converted. We need to... God has to affect us in such a way that he can use us and use us to reach those who are at odds with us. And that's not an easy task. So none of this is a condemnation of, of Colin or Dilio or anyone. We are all in this boat together. We're all in this same situation. We all need to take to heart the rebuke that Ellen White gives regarding the message of Abimelech. And the messages that Dwight has been giving on Sabbath mornings. And the messages that we've seen as we've tried to understand the lines in a deeper way. So we're going to look at this in more detail, you know, starting Sunday morning, going through this three years. But there is something that, that, that we need to see as we continue these studies. And what we need to see isn't some, some information outside of us. It's something inside of us. <clears throat> so any final thoughts on 2030? I know there's lots of chronological information that I just skipped over. Um, I am trying to put this together in a study. Uh, so it just the problem that I have is as I start writing, there's too much detail. But I want to put this in an organized fashion uh, so that we can address this. And we have two different ways that we're looking at. We're looking at 2030 from, from this internal part of this movement, but also 2030 in relation to uh, the plans that the World Economic Forum has uh, for humanity. And um, we can see that the world is a pretty messed up place. That we, we never realized how bad things were going to get years ago when we looked at what was going to happen in the future. We could read about it, but Things are much worse than I imagined they could be. And especially in the subtlety in how things come in. Things aren't as black and white as we would like them to be. So any, any final thoughts or observations? interesting perspective okay okay well um let's close with a word of prayer dear father in heaven we are so thankful for the sabbath that's coming for your presence in our lives 
and your presence in the day. We pray that you can help us to draw near to you. We pray for the studies and for the people in this movement. We ask that you can work upon our hearts. And um, we pray for Dwight's study tomorrow morning at 7.30 Mountain Time. We pray that you can bless that study and that it will help us in our walk with you. Be with each person. Bring us together again to study your word is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.